Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And yet again, we start with the five-year note, the belly of the curve, which last week broke out and this week extended before stopping right where it should at the old highs, basically, and the very important level that we uh, outlined here just above, uh, just around 3%. We have done a lot of work uh, in the past couple of weeks in terms of uh, new highs. Uh, we are now likely to wait for the Fed uh, basically in a range between just under 3% and around here, around 291, 292. Uh, it is perfectly normal for the market to retrace a part of this uh, big gain uh, that we've had uh, basically uh, if we say that this was the low up to the high we could easily come back even to just below uh, 290 but that should very much be it uh, and the Fed should actually give us a further impulse towards new highs it is more likely than not that the Fed is going to be hawkish uh, there is no reason for them to be anything but hawkish. All the data points towards uh, better uh, growth in the states. Um, therefore, we see absolutely no reason to change our mind that over the course of the next few months, we will be breaking the uh, 299 level and going substantially higher. But certainly, not, uh, we don't expect that in the next uh, week or so. Uh, but we do expect it sometime in the uh, fourth quarter. The flattening of the curve is still uh, on. This is the 10-year, and you can see how it's nowhere near as bullish in terms of yield as the 5-year. Uh, the 10-year now is likely to retrace, just like the 5-year did, and probably, uh, probably come back around, first of all, 303, and then possibly the 289, 290 area. This will basically give time for all these moving average to catch up, and it's going to be a wonderful opportunity to uh, set some option plays, looking for yields to exceed uh, easily the 3% area, uh, and probably get to 315 to 320 in, uh, in, in, in quite quick time. It is very important to keep in the back of your mind uh, TLT now we've shown you this before TLT 115 and a quarter is the magical level we have spent best part of a year uh, trading just above 115.25 if 115.25 were to break at some stage and you can see how the market has stayed above 115.25 and when it didn't it absolutely collapsed down to 101. That is going to be a very important tell. While it stays above 115 uh, the market is pretty much anchored but as soon as the 30 year breaks the 115 level uh, we are going to have a massive move and therefore it's very very important to uh, look for a weekly close below 115 is going to be a trend followers uh, you know best signal when a weekly close below 115.25 takes place in, in TLT and that is uh, certainly something that we expect to happen at some stage over the fourth quarter. Last week we told you that we we're looking for a move of about 10 basis points in Bunds well, we got only about six or seven basis points to the upside before the market started retracing. Uh, again, we see very uh, limited upside potential in the bonds for the time being, and that is what's anchoring the US and not allowing it to move higher. Uh, probably another few weeks of trading in the bond between uh, 37 basis points and 50 basis points and then even this market will be ready to go higher uh, if we have a look at a chart of uh, the 10 year in Germany against the uh, I'm sorry I apologize 
this is a tenure in Germany against the tenure in uh, uh, in the US we see that it's slowly slowly breaking out it, it's it's a crawl really but uh, we should be ready at some stage to take uh, to take out significant levels of the upside basically this is the last resistance around the 260 area and if we close start closing above there we could easily go to 275 basis points uh, and it just shows you uh, the pressure on the US rates uh, we think is going to be very very significant uh, the further on we go into the fourth quarter and that all signifies that the risk on attitude is going to be uh, still on simply because people will be putting money to work not in bonds but in equities. This is an enlarged weekly chart of the INX. You can see how it's crawling and just touching the top of the Bollinger Bands and it's the bottom is contained by these moving averages that uh, keep it very much in check. So uh, for next week 2895 is going to be a very very important level and the first level is around going to be around 2905. So next week we're expecting no more than uh, 2940 ish for the uh, for the top and then at some stage and probably before the Fed we are looking for a move certainly down towards the 2905 level which would fill a lot of gaps but while this posture uh, is on uh, and we are contained by this bottom uh, moving average the upside is still favored should we close below the 2905 level uh, 2895 level of this uh, moving average we have a lot of mo uh, room to move down to this red moving average which has caught the market so often and that is going to be at 2800 so volatility could pick up significantly if we were to break these top moving averages because distribution would that take place for at least two or three weeks all the way down towards 2800 if we look at a daily chart of uh, SPX well we are you know we close right on top of the Bollinger Band to us it's unlikely that we sustain this we think that sometime over the first two or three days we do trade for sure down to this 2905 level first level is going to be 2818 2820 and then we fill this gap and come down to 2910 or so uh, probably on Tuesday or Wednesday before the Fed uh, and then we will be ready to make our move but even here if we were to break this red moving average we have a lot of room our first objective will be the bottom of the Bollingers around the 2870 level at that stage so you can see how at the moment we are very much uh, towards the top and the risk reward actually is for a move uh, of a couple of percentage points down first and then probably even further uh, we are not in a bull market in SPX at the moment not not a classic bull market in equities where everything is going up and I will show you why next well this is a 10 minute chart of NQ this was Friday Thursday Wednesday Tuesday Monday closed last Friday where was it right where we closed within 10 ticks of where we closed this Friday NQ has been the driver of the, and it's you know it's 25 percent of the SPX and has been the driver in SPX for such a long time NQ as we keep on telling you is just not driving anything unless this starts picking up significantly we are unlikely to have uh, any impulsion in SPX for the next few days and here we have a uh, an hourly chart of IWM i.e. basically the Russell so small cap every time it goes up to this level around the uh, just short of 172 it gets smacked straight back down 
no impulsion whatsoever in small caps and small caps were very very impulsive at the beginning uh, of the year and then led the market up in April and have basically done absolutely nothing since this day this high up here they could just basically trade one or two percentage points around it and this was in June so basically the uh, the small caps have done nothing at all to the upside since June that to us tells us that now we are in a period of rotation rather than a bull market and people are rotating out of aggressive stocks uh, growth stocks into more defensive stocks and if that is the case we cannot have uh, a sustained move in SPX uh, more than uh, the top of the Bollinger Bands and we showed you where those come in so the risk reward for the early part of next week to us is clearly on the downside we probably have 25 to 30 base uh, ticks to the downside in SPX while we only have a maximum potential of about 10 ticks to the upside uh, so we are more likely we are saying to trade 2900 than we are to trade above 2945 with the market having closed 2935 that's nearly a three to one risk reward on the downside in SPX the final reason why we think that SPX is not going to be able to sustain these levels is actually Europe uh, you can see how the 200 day moving average is, has now turned over we've had a, a very nice corrective rally that's taken out all short positions in the in the stocks and now we are ready uh, at 3455 to basically let this market have it uh, we are beginning uh, even on Monday to start buying put spreads we think this market is going to roll over and trade back down towards 3300 without any problem uh, and put, put spreads are the way to play this to us uh, we think the move is going to be uh, at least at least 150 points lower in the uh, in the stocks and if we look at uh, the DAX cash very much the same picture even on the dailies and the weeklies 12,650 very much the top will the bottom being uh, around the 11,800 so even if we start buying put spreads at 12,500 we are confident that we have a 700 point drop in the next few days finally the DXY the dollar index uh, this is uh, setting up very very nicely for what we want to do which as we told you 93.63 when it's there we want to buy uh, a good size position in uh, straddles thinking that the market goes at least 5% from this level uh, with the straddles being priced somewhere around the 3.5 to 3.75% in six months it w the move we think is going to be pretty quick because this is becoming an unsustainable position either this is a big head and shoulders and we go all the way back to where we came from which is below 90 or we just bounce from this level we uh, and this uh, comes into play and we go much higher we probably go to par uh, very very quickly uh, but we're talking about a couple of months to get there so really buying the straddles at 93.63 when it trades there uh, at the money straddles with that as a strike is going to be a very very interesting play uh, for the next six months we favor the upside simply because the interest rate differentials tell us that the dollar is going to be favored but if that's not the case and we have some uh, massive problem in the United States we are quite happy to uh, correct it on, uh, to collect the uh, the winnings on the downside that is why we want the straddles we think it's going to be a very very interesting play that you certainly should do uh, six month straddles are very very cheap three uh, three and a half to three point seven five percent and it'll be very interesting to see the development of this market as far as uh, spreads are concerned and how they're positioned still absolutely no change 
In fact, last week uh, our barometer got even more positive. The, uh, all the spreads are saying that we are in a period of risk on. Uh, the fact that we are likely to have a 1% to 2% market correction is not going to do anything to the spreads. Uh, we've looked at them all and they're all in a bullish position. Uh, it would take uh, a lot of time and a lot of movement between re related markets to make those spread go bearish. So we're still in a period of risk on. Uh, the everything is still pointing to equities for the next uh, weeks and months being a far better place to invest than bonds. So uh, uh, it's still a buy the dip market. The dip is likely to happen on the f during the first uh, few days of next week, uh, trading down towards the 2900 as we showed you, but it's still very much a buy the dip market. Very little change in uh, five years and ten years. Uh, we are uh, we we'd love it to get back up towards the 113.05, 113 113.16 area, so we can reset some pretty uh, pretty good sized shorts in futures. Uh, it to us this is uh, going to be a short term correction in five year and ten year while the uh, S&Ps go down towards that 2905, 2915 level that we told you and then the trend reasserts itself and the five years go down in price and SPX probably rises back up to the top of the Bollinger Bands. Um, Germany, uh, it still we're still looking eventually for at least 10 basis points to the upside from where we are. We showed you the levels around 0.56. If we start breaking that, it's going to accelerate. As we said, XBX is now overextended. Uh, key will be the beha behavior around the 2900. At the moment, 2940 is very much topish. So we probably have a setup for a three to one trade down over the first two or three days of next week. NQ, dead money. Uh, don't touch it. Uh, there's no point in, uh, in, in touching it at the moment until we have a setup which goes, you know, which it's telling you that it's about to motor to the upside. At the moment we see that it's increasingly vulnerable, but it's, it, it's receiving no bearish confirmation. It's basically a sideways market, and since that is a sideways market, we don't see what is going to force SPX to go up. European equities is the ones that we think are probably even a better short and uh, we are definitely going to be putting on some put spreads early on Monday and Tuesday looking for a move down to at least 11,800 in the, in the DAX but more likely than not a continuation down to 11,450. The dollar we've told you what we want to do we continue to want to do that and Nikkei, finally, is still uh, the one that's pushing everything. Apologies for that. Let's go a quick look at Nikkei. Um, where did I put it? Here it is. It takes, I mean, it, it's doing nothing wrong, but it's going to take a few days of consolidation. And that'd be wonderful. It, it, it actually chimes wonderfully with uh, what we're looking for in XBX, which is two or three days of, of down trade. We'd love to see it back around this kind of level, 23,100, 23,300, and that would be a great level to buy for another leg higher, which should take it up, up to at least 24,500. So we are uh, in sync, basically. We think that the markets which will do well are Japan and the US eventually. The ones that will do least well for the time being are uh, the European markets. So we are bullish, <coughs> still Japan, <coughs> apologies, we are still bullish uh, on a buy the dip at some stage around 2900 for the SPX, uh, not so bullish for the DAX and the stocks. That's all we have for you today and have a great weekend and tweet you on Monday.